Why is it so hard to build a functioning team? Or how does that super team filled with skilled individuals fail? That's the problem of modern individualism. As we become more individualistic, we started to lose our ability to work as a functioning unit. But should we stop being individualistic and act as a super organism? No. The key is building teams where individuals not chosen by skill alone, but with also compatibility in mind. But that's not alone, because someone has to emerge among the group and become a leader. Yes, yes, yes. All of you will say, oh, leadership or shot calling is a thing of the past. Now we are equals. Everyone has to have a say on what you should do. If there is nothing at stake, do whatever makes you feel valuable. But if there are stakes, you should build a healthy feedback loop between information providers and information processors. That means someone has to provide information and someone has to decide what to do with it. That will eliminate indecisiveness in important situations. We always use the word dictator as an insult, like a person who likes to bully others. But what it really means is the person who dictates what you are going to do, so you can work efficiently to a united goal. I can hear you say, countries ruled by one-person regimes are always struggling in at least one way. And you are right. But not because there's someone who takes charge. They struggle because they can't build a healthy feedback loop. But why can't they build a healthy feedback loop? Because it's impossible to build a healthy relationship with an entire country. And according to Robin Dunbar, you can only build healthy relationship with around 150 people. And that's called the Dunbar's number. So everything I am going to tell you today only applies to groups that have less than 150 people in it. Okay, if you are still here, I'll start explaining how we are going to build a healthy and efficient team. First, let's start with how we are going to build individual relationships. For that, we are going to use Grigory Reinin's Reinin Traits, also known as Reinin Dichotomies. Reinin Traits is based on Carl Jung's work. Carl Jung's cognitive functions are explained in four dichotomies. Grigory Reinin wanted to extend on that idea. So he created 11 more dichotomies based on combinations of four basic dichotomies. And socionics researchers created the idea of small groups based on these 15 dichotomies. Also, there are four tiers to categorize these 15 dichotomies. Simple and quick explanation. If that dichotomy is based on one letter, it's called first tier dichotomy. Second tier if it is based on two letters. Third tier if it is three letters. And fourth tier if it relies on all four letters. Oh, I'll leave links for MBTI cognitive functions, and socionics if you want to learn more. Back to topic. Small groups are groups that share three dichotomies and build their strategies around those, which are shared by four of the 16 types. You should build your groups around those. I'm going to skip first tier single letter dichotomies because we already covered them in our last three video and focus on remaining 11. First, start with six second tier dichotomies. Static dynamic dichotomy is about how you manage different stages of a plan. Statics view it as different little stages. 
so they divided them to sub-stages and deal with it with different little plans. While Dynamics view it as one big stage and come up with one complete plan. It's determined by the combination of the first and last letter of your type. EP and IJ is static. EJ and IP is dynamic, yielding obstinate dichotomy, also known as resource protecting and interest protecting, is about the balance of resources and payoffs, yielding types value resources, while obstinate types value payoffs. Yielders say you can't do anything without resources, while obstinate say resources are there to provide payoffs. It is determined by combination of first and third letter of your type. ET and IF is yielding. EF and IT is obstinate. Next in line is aristocratic, democratic dichotomy. It is about determining what each person can bring to the table. Aristocratic types determine what each person can bring by their classes. So, they assign roles based on those. Democratic types, on the other hand, determine what each person can bring by their personality and skills. So, they assign roles based on those. It's determined by combination of the second and the third letter of your type. NT and SF types are democratic. NF and ST types are aristocratic. Another dichotomy is tactical, strategic dichotomy. This dichotomy is about quality versus quantity mindset. Tactical types want to create methods that produce more resources in whatever shape and form, while strategical types want to take which resources they want, regardless of the methods or amount they get. It's determined by second and last letter of your type. MP and SJ types are tactical. NJ and SP types are strategical. Fifth, second tier dichotomy is constructivist, emotivist dichotomy, which determines what you can adapt to. Constructivists are good at adapting new systems and tools, but terrible at adapting new situations, while emotivists are good at adapting new people and atmosphere, but terrible at learning new things. It's determined by third and last letter of your type. TP and FJ types are constructivists, TJ and FP types are emotivist, and our last second tier dichotomy is carefree, far-sighted dichotomy. This dichotomy is about determining how you wanna deal with roadblocks. Carefree ones wanna come up with solutions when they see a problem, while the farsighted ones wanna prepare general solutions ahead for common problems. Okay. Now we are going into third tier dichotomies. And first in line is Mary serious dichotomy, also known as subjectivist and objectivist. Mary serious dichotomy is about determining how to perform better. Subjectivist, Mary type's performance relies on finding the best fit to their need. While objectivist, serious type's performance relies on best statistical choices. It is determined by your last three letter. NTP, STP, NFJ and SFJ types are merry. NFP, SFP, NTJ and STJ types are serious. Second, third tier dichotomy we are going to cover is judicious decisive dichotomy. We also call this dichotomy reasonable and resolute. This dichotomy is about balancing the development and execution phases of a strategy. Reasonable, 
Judicious types prefer to spend more time in the relaxed development phase and look for the best moment. While resolute, decisive types prefer to spend more time in the active execution phase and start the race early. Much like in our last dichotomy, this one is also determined by your last three letter, but in different combination. NTP, NFP, STJ and SFJ types are judicious. NFJ, NTJ, SFP and STP types are decisive. Next in line is positivist, negativist dichotomy. This dichotomy is about how you manage luck. Positivists want to be open for possibilities and take risks, while negativists want to avoid risks and disasters. It's determined by the first three letter of your type. ENT, ESF, IST and INF types are positivists. ISF, ENF, EST and INT types are negativists. And our last third tier dichotomy is process result dichotomy. This dichotomy is about sustained effects versus burst effects discussion. Process types prefer to have sustained effects, while result types prefer to have burst effects. Much like first two, it's determined by the last three letters of your type. NTP, SFP, NFJ and STJ are process types. NFP, STP, NTJ and SFJ are result types. Now, we only have one fourth tier dichotomy and we will cover it. It's called asking declaring dichotomy and it is about how you improve yourself. Asking types improve by questioning and learning from others, while declaring types improve by setting goals and accomplishing them. These types are asking and these types are declaring. Now we know how these dichotomies divide people, we can use them to group people into functioning teams that have a clear goal of how to accomplish their task. You have to choose three related dichotomy. For example, if you choose extraversion, introversion, process, result and asking declaring dichotomy, group you created were called rings of benefit. One group is good at generating energy, other is carrying energy, and other one is generating information, and last one is accumulating information. But the most common grouping called quadras. Quadras are chosen with democratic, aristocratic, judicious, decisive, and merry, serious dichotomy. They also use the same four function in their first four function stack, but in different orders. Meaning, when they are working together, they are always satisfied, because they only get to use their preferred functions. Alpha group has ME, TI, FE and SI in their preferred function stack. Beta group has FE, NI, SE and TI in their preferred function stack. Delta group has NE, FI, TE and SI and Gamma group has TE, NI, SE and FI in their preferred function stack. But who will lead the group? To answer that, I will quickly explain six leadership styles. Authoritative, visionary leadership is about defining goals and inspiring your team to chase that goal with you. 
Coaching leadership is about recalibrating your uncoordinated teammates' personal goals into your central one. Affiliative leadership is about resolving conflict with the team by valuing everyone's feelings and connecting them. Democratic leadership is about getting information from your teammates and acting on it. Listening is really important. Pace setting leadership is about inspiring and motivating your team to work even harder. But if you fail, your effectiveness as a leader might diminish. So use it carefully. And finally, coercive, commanding leadership is about taking control. One who can master all these styles and when to use them should be the team's leader. Okay, we came to the designing part and we are going to use these traits to design combos. I mean, everyone likes combos because it makes them feel smart. And when I say combos, it not only means combos that you made with your allies, but also combos where you exploit an enemy's weaknesses. First, start with second tier combos. Static combos should be about passive qualities of tools, while dynamic combos should be about active usage of tools. Yielding combos should give players resources, while obstinate combos should give them payoffs. For aristocratic combos, you should give value to building our own teams or tribes. While democratic combos should be about that piece's individual values. Tactical combos should give players more options. While strategic combos should give them better options. Constructivist combos should return concrete value while emotivist combos should remove stress. For carefree combos, you should create catch-up mechanics, and for farsight combos, you should create prevention or prohibition mechanics. Ok, now we covered basic combos, so we should move into third tier complex combos. By creating situational combos, you will please merry types. And by adding combos that can be done in any situation, you will please serious types. In the meanwhile, by creating combos that slows the game, you will please judicious types. While creating combos that accelerates the game, you will please decisive types. For positivists, Create combos that are risky but worthy, and don't punish them too hard for fails. For negativists, create combos that are risk-free, but always make them be careful so they can feel good about overcoming all the bad luck. Make sure you have combos that create sustained effects for process types and give explosive combos for result types. And finally, for our fourth tier combo, create combos that can be quickly done when the time is right for askers, and create combos that can be hard to do but unstoppable once they done for declarers. Now let's summarize what we have learned. We can build 11 more dichotomies based on 4 Jungian dichotomy. Those dichotomies can be used to create groups of people who can work together for same combos. There are 6 leadership styles that are effective in different situations. We can use reigning dichotomies to design satisfying combos. Hello. First of all, if you reach this part of the video, thank you for your support and best of luck on your journey. What do you think? 
Do you agree with what I told you? Or can you tell me the last combo you created? And which leadership styles can you use? And if you like this video, I know you are smart enough to like and subscribe. By hitting the like button and subscribing to this channel, you can show me that you want more videos from me. Our next video will be the last part of this series, which we cover payoffs and how we can define them with Enneagram. And if you want me to dive into another subject, just let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching.